the recent event, the shocking news about the convicted murderer, Mamiya Abul Jamal, presenting a commencement address from prison. I join in the sentiments of the Department of Corrections Secretary John Wetzel, who stated that he cannot express his disdain enough about the decision to allow this individual to be a commencement speaker. And I believe it's despicable and unworthy. In my opinion also, to allow a cold-blooded murderer to engage in this conduct would cause extreme distress to Officer Daniel Faulkner's family. Our brave men and women in law enforcement risk their lives every day to protect the public. When one of those officers gives the ultimate sacrifice, I think it is our responsibility as lawmakers to do everything we can to support the families, the family members who are left behind. I commend and thank Representative Verb for his quick work on this issue, on this bill. For those reasons, I call up House Bill 2533, Representative Verb's bill. Council Dimmick is going to explain the bill. House Bill 2533 would add a new provision to the state's Crime Victims Act entitled Revictimization Relief. The bill provides that if an offender engages in conduct that would cause mental anguish to the victim of his crime, or in the case of a homicide, to the family of the crime victim, then the victim is entitled to obtain a court order to stop that offender's conduct. The bill also provides that the district attorney or attorney general may bring the action on behalf of the crime victim. There are no amendments. Questions, comments? Is, uh, is Was that planned at all? Oh, okay. Representative Grell, question? I know this is uh, moving awfully quickly, but do we have any input from the Office of Victim Advocate or the DA's Association or I, some of the other groups we're just, that we've been uh, mentioning that, and I believe we do. Okay, Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer, do you want to come up and give comment? Okay. Jennifer Morning. Storm, go ahead. Uh, Jennifer Storm, I'm the victim advocate for the Commonwealth. I want to thank the leadership for bringing this topic up as swiftly as it, as it has been brought up. Um, we were engaged um, right, right away with the drafting of the language, with notifying uh, the family of uh, Daniel Faulkner. Maureen Faulkner wanted to be here today. However, she is in New York actually doing some national media around this. But she has provided me with a statement that we're going to read at the press conference today. So they're in full support of this. I can tell you that as a victim advocate working for over a decade, one of the worst things for me to have to tell a victim is there's absolutely nothing you can do. You have no rights beyond the rights of the defendant. Um, to have this bill, to be able to allow a victim to go to a court and have injunctive relief when an individual is clearly engaging in conduct that is only for the purpose of re-traumatizing them to further their harm. Uh, it's an incredible tool. Truly, I think that this is a groundbreaking piece of legislation. I've spoken with my counterparts at the national level um, who have looked at the language as well, think that it's unique, and it's an innovative approach to really address a significant need for crime victims. So we very, very much emphatically support this piece of legislation, and we thank you very much. Well, we thank you for your support and for being here to explain it. Thank you. Representative Costa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in 2002, I was shot, and I, had li I live today with a bullet at the base of my brain. I know what the shooting did to my family, and I can only imagine what, if I would have succumbed to that injury, what this would do to them and uh, to my brothers and sisters in law enforcement. I'm asking for you unanimous yes vote on this. It's very important to law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Brown. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Um, how would this affect a situation like uh, Representative Ron Waters has a wonderful program that I've participated in where he has um, criminals from Greatestford who are on um, lifers or death row, and he channels them in through the radio station to talk to high school students. And um, 
and, and they talk about what they have done and they try to encourage children not to uh, follow in their footsteps, how would that affect the program like that? May I? Go ahead. Sure. If I may, this, the bill is constructed to give a lot of discretion to the judge here because there's not an ability to foresee all the different types of situations where something could come up, where there's conduct by an offender. So it is designed, as you read the language, only in those situations where it causes this kind of emotional distress to the victim. That's the same language drawn out of the stalking statute. So there's a certain threshold there. And also, it's, it's not mandatory. The judge has to exercise his or her equitable discretion and to see whether this is a situation where an injunction is called for, whether constitutionally it's permissible, and uh, an exercise of discretion to make sure to do that properly. Just to further address that also, in situations like that, the Department of Corrections actually does have a media policy. So we work with restorative justice programs a lot within the Office of the Victim Advocate. Those requests come informally to the Department of Corrections. They then come over to the Office of the Victim Advocate. We clear them with the crime victims. Oftentimes we, we get yeses. Sometimes obviously if they're um, language is going to be of a victim blaming or um, traumatizing uh, aspect, then, then we have the right to say no. But we do have a formal policy in place that allows for that. This is really going to that conduct that the DOC doesn't have a policy for. That would really be that the intent is to re-traumatize the family, to re-victimize them, and we have no way of stopping it. Now, could you explain how the commencement speech with Mumia, uh, how would you know ahead of time before hearing the actual text of the speech would, in, would be the intent to re-victimize the family? I think in this situation, past conduct would dictate um, what the, the content of that speech. Uh, in this instance, this individual has never expressed any remorse in any way, shape, or form, has continuously sought to re-victimize this family, um, has, has never expressed any type of remorse whatsoever for the crime. And one further question: um, Would there be any penalties if the if the if the phone conversation? Because I understand it was recorded through through a telephone call. Yes. It was not skyped, and he was not there in person. That's true. I, I corrected that with the Associated Press this morning. <laughs> Thank you. So um, let's say that the person who recorded the call decided to then produce that. Are there penalties for that person for producing that, or does the penalty always result with the with the actual? Um, person who's incarcerated. If I may, the, the bill uh, speaks to the court's ability to enjoin that conduct. So it's, uh, I, I think the court would have broad power to, to stop a third party who is a, the vessel of that, of that conduct or speech from delivering it or publishing that information. Now I also understand that the bill has penalties and fees for um, court fees for the victim. So if it was a third party, would the third party then be responsible for the fees or is it the person incarcerated responsible? The, well, the, if there were, if the court were to uh, apply those attorney's fees against the person, it would be against the offender. It would be the, the offender, okay. All right. Um, if I could, I just want to um, say that I will be voting in the affirmative on the bill, but I do want to work with Representative Verb to address some of those issues because I believe that if a third party person is using this information, that, that those fees should be enjoined by them as well. So I think that we could kind of tweak this a little bit more so that if we're going to do this, it is very thorough. And I want to make sure that um, programs like Representative Ron Waters would not um, be affected by this. And uh, I, one, one last question. A program like that, did, had, was that run through your office? So this, no, this did not get run through our office because it didn't come through the traditional media request chain <coughs> where the Department of Corrections is receiving a media request. This was basically, Momia added this journalist to his phone list and then engaged in a conversation which then became public. Uh, which we've seen this before. We've seen where inmates are giving um, interviews, if you will, to either journalists or would-be journalists who are then taking that information, putting it on blogs, taking it and playing it on the radio. Um, and oftentimes there's extremely victim blaming, in some cases identifying victims of sexual assault by name, by address, um, and we've had zero ability to stop it. This bill would enable us to, uh, you know, at least would enable the, the victim to take something before the court to try and stop it. 
Right. Thank you. Thank you for your work because um, I've, I've been a victim of violence myself. Um, Sorry. So I, I understand the plight of victims and needing to protect them. And I just hope that as we move forward, we will look at other areas where there is constant victimization uh, going on, especially in media and other places. Uh, we need to protect victims at all costs. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm filling in for Chairman Marsico. He'll be right back. Uh, just to mention to the members that at 3.30 today, there is going to be a press conference in the rotunda on this piece of legislation, so you all are welcome to be there. Uh, Representative Hackett. Thank you, Chairman. Representative Brown, just to, just to clarify, on Representative Wooders' program, d d you, you said he had life sentence uh, folks talking to high school kids, and if that's correct, do you know if those... Uh, Victims or surviving victims of of the uh, of that crime are notified before they speak to those high school kids. Do you know that? I, I wouldn't know anything of the process. That's why I'm very concerned about yeah. this legislation to make sure that that good programs that are out there are not hindered or stifled by this this legislation. That's so, what I like. But to you talk don't know to anything about, about, about the process of how that program works. But yet, it's a good program. I've been, I've witnessed it. It is an excellent program. I've sat in a community college where he's had about 300 uh, community members there listening to the lifers, and it has been life changing. I've sat in three uh, high schools where we had an auditorium full of high schoolers, and they walked away very impacted by this this great dialogue. But we still don't know people. if they notified those family survivors of the the victim of that crime that put that life for there first. We don't, you don't know that yet? I could ask Ron. No, that's why I'd like to continue to have okay. this conversation. I, th I, I think that's a good um, place for us to be. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? Moved by Chairman Marsico, second by Ryan, Barbin. Uh, are there any negative votes? If not, the bill has been approved. We'll next move to the final bill is Senate Bill 508, Council Demick. Yes, yes. Senate Coke Industries, which is a conglomerate, they're some of the wealthiest okay. people in the whole U.S. Right, actually, right. some of right. the wealthiest people in the world. And uh, Coca-Cola, uh, the company Coca-Cola, is completely unrelated, not owned by them okay. or any association. Okay. So, and one of the things we have to look at is, yeah, look at what products, if you don't like what someone does in life, boycott. don't buy their products. Yeah, right. Exactly what you have to do. So that's why I didn't want people all of a sudden right. boycotting <laughs> Coca-Cola, no, even though Coca-Cola is not good for us. Right, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. You're running for governor either, right. you know what right. I'm saying? Right. <laughs> no, I'm glad you corrected it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, wait, are we back on? Are we running? Cool, y'all let us know because we may be in here seeing some Right, like, I don't conditions. want to get caught it's on great camera to see like Jesse Jackson. Yeah, yeah, Thank you for catching there's not a right tape in there. there. <laughs> no, it, wasn't. it was a tape. She was looking in the wrong deck. So, so we we're going to rewind it and then we're going to pick up. Yeah, the tape was running. Good, 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 because that was good stuff. That was good stuff so far. Here's one of the things that I like to address. What do you, knowing that. So we good. You're good. Knowing that how the relationship. The relationship, one of the things that they were proposing in Atlanta were body cameras for police. Yes. And um, the relationship between the police and the um, um, African here in the American community, what are some of the things do you, um, how, how would you address that and what are the same, some of the things that you would change, if any? Well, I think it's a great thing that they'd be putting these cameras on. Mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic because it gets rid of this he said, she said type stuff and where, where's the reality of it all? Mm -hmm. So these cameras, we just have to make sure that they can't be smudged or they can't be burned out and everything mm -hmm. else like that, that it's a full and complete record so that we really have the full information in each thing. You know, you can see that, I mean, it's dangerous to be a policeman. We mm -hmm. all know that. But it's also right. dangerous to be a citizen nowadays. Right. Especially a, <laughs> especially right. a black citizen. Especially you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, and one of the things, too, I mean, we can, we can have the cameras and we have to be candid. I think that the people have to be empowered more. This, the citizen review boards have to be empowered more because it's not just what's viewed. We have film after film after film after film of misconduct by police officers, blatant police brutality, racial profiling. In fact, there was one film where a gentleman was shot for reaching in his glove after being ordered to give his registration. His and, ID. His yeah. ID. He was shot. In North Carolina. In North Carolina, he was shot. So we're looking at 
stiff or penal, I'm thinking that the citizens should have more power and there should there needs to be stiffer penalties on the police. We have people who are serving life sentences. It was a man that gave, I think, like a hundred years for walking out of the store with a beer. You know what I'm saying? And he was right. you know, he was he was a, a black guy, African here in America, whereas we're having police uh, just blatantly yeah. and willfully um, um, murdering. It's it's and, shameful. Yeah. So is it's there terrible some way that, when you get to this state yeah. where you can't trust and you're you're afraid of the police. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Right. I mean, people shouldn't be afraid of the police, and uh, they'll go up to the wrong house and kill people yeah. inside the uh, house. That's right. happened a m number of times, and so yeah, I mean, it has to be done correctly, and it's not being done. And people need to be more honorable back when right. they do something wrong. They need to say, "This is a." Tragedy. This mm -hmm. shouldn't have happened. We need to, we're going to change how we do things. But they're not saying that. Mm -hmm. And they need to take that into their culture. We need a cultural change inside of our law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We need to have it where there's the no knock warrants go away, mm -hmm. first of all, okay? Yeah. Or, there, or you have to have like three judges yeah. sign off on the order and not just one that could be bought yeah. into the system, you know? We also have to have it where the uh, asset forfeiture. Mm -hmm is also goes away yeah, only yeah. through judicial process someone has to be convicted mm -hmm. prior to them being able to confiscate any personal property because mm -hmm. they just roll people sometimes they know someone can't defend themselves so right. they just okay right. i'm taking your money i'm taking this okay well if you want it back go pay five thousand dollars to lawyer the people right. don't have five thousand dollars to pay for a lawyer that's wrong mm -hmm. um i'm going to ask this question and it's basically it's tied into economics and it's tied into what we were just talking about with the police mm -hmm. brutality and I'm sure we've all heard about um, what happened in Habersham County with Baby Boo Boo. Yeah. Right? The police went in, uh, basically had a no knock warrant, threw the flash bang mm -hmm. grenade in through the window, and it landed in the baby's crib. Blew up in the baby's face. I don't mm -hmm. know if you all saw yeah. how deformed yeah. and messed up Baby Boo Boo really was. Um, so, my question to you is. This child now has $400,000 in medical bills. How can we hold the police departments more accountable to help be responsible for something like that? Because what they're telling the family now is you're, oh well, you're on a, now they went into these people's homes, found no drugs, found no one selling drugs, the person that they were so-called looking for. Um, they basically just found the, the older mother, the father, and the baby in the crib. So. What can citizens do in instances like that to protect themselves? Because now, not only have they been victimized by the police, they're now in economic debt tremendously because of the mishaps of the police. How do you respond to that? I mean, we need to have it that, first of all, these things just don't happen in the first place. We really have to avoid that from happening. And we can do that if we get the right people, the right leaders into office, and we change things. Mm -hmm. And this will be, and you need to have people that beforehand are passionate about the change. And this is one of the changes I'm very passionate about. There's some things that I'd like to see change. There's other things we just have to change. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have to change our police culture. We have to change the invasion on people's personal rights. We have to be constitutional. We have to get it back to where we have our liberties and freedoms, and the government doesn't take those from us anymore. Mm -hmm. It's in our U.S. Constitution, and we've gotten so far from that, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And now, <laughs> as far as yeah. when they're, they're damaged and everything like this, well, let, let's have it that uh, the insurance policy that the policemen have, that if something happens to them, is extended if the policemen uh, mm -hmm. incorrectly do that to someone else. Now, that I like. Yeah. That's... Mm -hmm. Let's have let's response. let's get that umbrella insurance and take it out a notch. And mm -hmm. if it's it's uh, you know improperly done or misinformed or whatever like that, that the other people are covered. Right now, that would definitely uh, tighten the reins on the police as far as making sure they have their eyes dotted and their T's crossed before they go running in mm -hmm. to somebody's home and throwing flashbang grenades without checking to see if there are children right. in there well, first. Well, not only that, but to verify that the person's in the house. Now, right. they, they later on, I think two or three days later on, mm -hmm. uh, did arrest that person on the open street like they should have I'm done like, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. In the open daylight, just, okay, they and then they just arrested him right mm -hmm. there, and there was you know, no issue. Mm -hmm. And that's the way good police work's done. You know, brother Gideon, you look like you want to say something. 
It's interesting. I'm just so involved and, and just praise the Most High for allowing me to be here amongst this esteemed group. Yes, sir. But when I think about the political process, one of the things that strikes me as a non-participant is that you have a, an electorate, and that electorate is who it is. Speaking of oh, I need to get closer. Yeah. Yeah. That electorate goes through a process of registration. Am I correct? Yes. The registration process identifies who it is that's uh, legally allowed to vote, right? Correct. They vote for their candidate of choice. Correct. Mm -hmm. The candidate of choice is selected by what we are told is a democratic process. We'll just, for the sake of non-argument, say that that's what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're on the same team now, right, okay? But it seems to me, after the electorate have made their selection, then that individual has to go to the entity called the government. And what does he have to do? Or she? She has to swear an oath. Am I correct? Yes. This is the question. <laughs> make, and it's, make sure very, you your mic. it's very simple. If the registered electorate have duly elected an individual based on their selection, why then should that individual that has already been approved by the registered electorate have to go through a swearing in process to an entity that is already uh, through the governmental electoral process elected an individual? And I'm gonna give you my perspective which is why I'm going to say you can never change the system and the ideology of the police culture because they sign oaths, they sign contracts, they make commitments that right. are based in ancient guilds and crafts, whether it's, and see, you have layers of organizations within an organization. You have fraternal order of the police. Right. Mm -hmm. You have the clan of the police. Right. Mm -hmm. You have the original groups that they sprang out of, which are really cultic, and we're dealing with uh, dramatic and druid influences in this holiday season on a very large economic scale. So all of that is involved in the policing and the culture that you say and you're just not going to change 2,000 or 10,000 years of cultic culture that is codified by oaths, mm -hmm. contracts, you know, and they have to go through rituals like skull and bones. And uh, you understand what so, I'm saying? Yeah. Are, are you basically saying what's the purpose of the people selecting a candidate and then the candidate that is selected by the people, then, therefore, has to swear in allegiance to the oligarchy, to the system, to the oligarchy. Right. See, the oligarchy runs everything. Just like on, we were talking earlier about on this council, we, this is a microcosm of a larger council. Right. But I told Black, I said, you see, even see uh, uh, control here because there are only certain people that have the gavel. Yeah, everybody should have a gavel if it's equal. equal but right. they'll, it'll never be equal. So my question to you: answer this question. Why then, and, and, and that my perspective is, again, you've got registered people, they've made their selection, but then that individual has to go pay his allegiance to the oligarchy by playing, uh, giving another oath, signing another contract when they've already been codified for the people. Talk to me. Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, you have to look at where the candidate came from. Did they come from one of the big parties? Well, they've already signed an oath and an obligation back to that party. Right. And that party's system and of that party's way of doing things. And we can see from the history of Georgia, where the Democrats had majority control of everything over the years, where that got us. There are still areas of the state that are run completely by the Democrats. Okay? There's an overall system run by the Republicans, and we know what that's done. Okay? So what we need to do is find people that aren't sold out to these big parties, that aren't sold out to all these special interest groups that you're speaking of. And that's who you need to vote for. You need to vote for people that are free and independent of that. And if they are part of the big party system, guess what? They're part of the big party system. That's why government is where it's at. 
If they're independent of those big parties and they believe in the Constitution and that government should be by and for the people, like the Constitution says, then that's who you need to vote for. And that's what I represent. Me, that's me, my whole stance. That we you. need to do. Okay. Bring it back to the people. The police. You're talking your mic. Uh, oh, yes. That's right. The police, this is another misnomer, and you didn't answer the question about them, uh, the electorate registering and then having to sign the oath to this oligarchy to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. But the okay, well, let them answer that. Okay, well, okay. from that, right. really, it's, it's a pledge to uh, represent the people. So the, what it is is no one's honoring their pledge. Right. That's the okay, problem. Yeah. And yeah, no yeah, one's no, honoring okay. the pledge. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> That's why we had to bring yes, that yeah, up. Yeah, right. Because, because they're, they're not abiding by okay. their pledge, now, period. Right. Blame, me, no, zip. This is the other thing. See, the judges and all of them have a bond that they have to sign. That bond is, has to be up to date in order for them to sit on the seat. So the point that I'm trying to make in reference to that is that they are on that bond, they have a pledge, and that pledge has nothing to do with the Constitution. See, the police, the judges, they are not under constitutional law. That's the misconception between the, the uh, citizenry, so-called, we have never been citizens because a citizen doesn't have to fight for their rights to vote or anything. So that's the other misnomer. But at the end of the day, they are not under constitutional law. So the citizenry thinking, well, the Constitution is in effect when in actuality in the judicial no. proceedings. Yeah, it's well, absolutely see, not. You're 100% the... correct. Okay, go You're ahead. You're 100% correct. <laughs> to me. It is absolutely not being run constitutionally at all right now. I mean, if it was constitutional, we would be able to have citizen juries, grand juries run by citizens and not by the legal system. The legal system itself is uh, an altercation of the constitutional way of coming to justice. Mm -hmm. So the original way of justice is a group of citizens would come together and form a grand jury, and then they would make a decision, and then the local sheriff or the militia mm -hmm. <laughs> would then enforce those decisions if they deemed it was correct. Right. And so you know that's the way it was done for a long time. And now what has happened is they said, well, these militia and these grand juries weren't consistent enough. So then they came up with this better system, which is then run by the large corporations, the attorneys mm -hmm. self-serving themselves and the different buyouts back to the police and the jail systems and everything else. And that's why instead of 0.2% of males being in jail, mm -hmm. we have 1% of males being in jail. Mm -hmm. And we need to return that back down to that I'm, I mean, that's, but almost, for us, that's almost a lose-lose. I mean, looking from an, an African here in America's perspective, which one was better? A bunch of Yahoo citizens coming around with the local militia. You mean the Klan? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we done been through that. Our history bore witness to that. You know what I'm we saying? We're going through you know, that. History it is. Right. Or, or, yeah. or, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, a big, you know, Civil rights, have, you know, my philosophy of, of, of revolution, but I know that everything has steps, and right. so there's processes that have to be taken. So it is, you know, and this is where we have to ask ourselves that question is here in African America. Is government, is the federal involvement in a lot of uh, instances, was that to our detriment or was that to our betterment? Because we look, we know the history of the Bull Connors and the, uh, Jim, Crow. the and Jim Crow, Jim Crow and things yeah. like that, and had Black it not codes. been, right, had it not been for, you know, some federal involvement that could still be, right? you know, there's... There are, baby. Yeah, but... I, <laughs> Come I, on, I mean, man. There, there are. There Ferguson, are. Missouri. Yeah, absolutely. Need I say more? Come yeah. on. Absolutely. absolutely. It's still I'm going gonna, on. Yeah, it's, it's still, still going, going on. on. We're not going to pretend... Absolutely. We're not gonna, it's we're still not gonna going to pretend on. that it's not... And we're it not going to pretend end. that it's not going yeah. on. You know, we're not going to pretend that it's not going on. But for one of the things that I don't... And I'm not a big civil rights man, but one of the things that I don't take for granted is just the ability to be here on Comcast Talking about our disagreements. They could, right. they, you know, you look at 50, 60 years ago, right. we got to be realistic as an African people in America. 50, right. 60 years ago, for us even talking about the Klan or these you know, racist militias that were coming against us was going to be unheard of. Right. No, we haven't made it to the damn promised land. No, we're not there yet. No, this is not reformism. is not the be all and do all for me anyway, in my opinion, or salvation for African people in America. But we have to acknowledge the, even if the minute advancements, that we made to have a proper assessment in our history and know which way to go. So I think that in anything, even... You got to stay positive. You got to stay positive, basically. Because if not, you'll be crying all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 but I say all of that to say this, 
that I think that anything that we get involved in, when we look at, uh, um, we have to just be careful because we have to look at our place in anything. Like I'm not a big advocate of, of bigger government, government intrusion and, right. and, and things. Yeah. I'm not a big advocate of that. But at the same time, I'm not. I'm not a big advocate. You are the government. Yeah, but at the same time, I I, we, I should be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, you you are who you vote for and who you tell other people to vote for and the system of that. And I love it that we're having this forum because you know what we're saying? We're saying there's a new choice. There's a new way. There's a different way that we can go forward with this. Mm -hmm. So you are working for change the way you can yeah. by, by us being here together, by us looking at how we can take this back. Exactly. But we have the, one of the problems is a lot of people don't understand that if they don't vote, it's going to keep on happening. A vote, no vote is not a protest. No vote is not a protest. Yeah. yeah. Will I respond to that? Or, uh, no, it was, it was, it yeah, was, yeah. it was right. Yeah, it yeah, was, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you vote for either of the two big parties, mm. you're saying, I want more of the same. Mm. I'm really happy with the way everything's done. I'm really happy with our education. I'm unemployment <laughs> with our un unemployment rates. I'm in happy with the poverty. I'm, I'm happy with the amount of imprisonment we have. Mm. Whether you vote D or R, you're going to get that thing. Now, if you have someone that stands up against that, then you need to vote. Everyone needs to come out and vote because that's how we take it back. Okay, now let me ask you this. Because you were just saying how there's, you know, the two big party systems, Democrat and Republican. Yeah. Uh, and how they're already tied in or in bed with special interest groups and what have you. And you're basically telling the people you need a different candidate from a smaller party to come in and change uh, the, the, the two-party system that we're used to. So, if they mm -hmm. care about the right things, right, you know, not just that you know they're a third party, but mm. someone that can make a positive change on these things and wants to make a positive change. Okay, so but if there are these two big party systems already, how can you coming in not only as the little guy but the new guy put a dent into that system that's already established and they're already engaged in their uh, crony capitalism, like yeah. you said, and everybody's in bed with each other. And you're, like I said, you're the new guy and you're, you're trying outside. to stick your, yeah, you're the outsider. Yeah. You're okay. trying to stick your head in and, and, and really find out what's going on. But what kind of a dent and impact can you really have coming from a smaller party? As uh, an ant to an elephant. To, to, right, to bring down this, this two party political system that we're so used to. Yeah, if I came in as just a state representative, and I was one of 200 people, I would be an ant to the elephant. Mm -hmm. But if I come in as the governor, mm -hmm. I ha I'm, that's one third of the three powers. Mm -hmm. You have the judicial, mm -hmm. the legislative, and the executive. The executive. Right. I'd be running the executive branch. I have so many different appointments to so many different positions that I can bring people in that run things. Mm -hmm. I can also have executive orders that I can do that alter things immediately without having to go back to the legislature. And, right, but, but then, you're talking about from the position of governor, yes. if you get that position. Right. But I'm saying the obstacles and hurdles that you even have to get through, even just from the, the two-party system, the Dems and the Republican, to even uh, obtain the seat of governor is going to be almost astronomical. So how can you chip away at that foundation that's already been laid it, so that you can go in and have a huge impact, like you're saying. Yeah. The only way I can do it is if I win the election. Right. Period. <laughs> That's it. That's right. And how do I chip away at it? Each of you. Okay. Each and every one of you going to vote. That's how I chip it away. That's how we build it up. That's how we make it big. We work together. We get together and we say we're going to take this back. And not just each of you vote. But each of you tell other people to vote Hunt right. for governor. Each one, if, each one. If we just look at, you know, your viewership, 40, 50,000, whatever it is, right. that doesn't get us there. Mm. We have to all inspire other people also because I'm not going to have the TV ads. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have all the other publicity. Right. The, the media doesn't even mention my name sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? So the people have to do this. If the people want to take government back, the people have to take government well, the back. The media doesn't mention it. Would it be like uh, D 
Deal, Carter, and that other guy? Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or there was a debate between Deal and Carter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but look, I, I mean, like look it. at the photos in the newspaper. They show Deal and Carter. Yeah, yeah. Where's that Hunt guy? Is there, there someone else? Look, but look, I like the way Mr. Hunt put it back on the people. It's up to you. Yeah. You have the power. You have the power of the vote. So he's putting it back in your hands to make the change that, according to Mr. Hunt, is needed and is wanted. So it's up to and the people. It, it, and in my opinion, I mean, it's, it, it, it's always been that. I mean, when you look at other people, you know, and African people in America, we have to stop assimilating. We have to, we have to go, we need our lobbyists. We need people to be on top of these politicians if they come and solicit our votes to make sure that they're serving some of, you know, our interests, some of the specific issues that, I mean, some of the issues that um, affect us specifically. We have to, if you believe in, in these people and these promises, you have to economically back them. You have to get out there, you have to save a rattle, and you have to do all the things. I think too many times we take a defeatist attitude. You know what I'm saying? We've been whooped up. Our booties have been whooped so long that we just don't see victory in anything. So, so we'll just sit back and we allow stuff to go on. But if you have uh, someone, and I appreciate you coming to the, to the, you know, to the show, that really, um, yes, and one of the things that we appreciate, because like I was telling son, that shows the validity of our show and the seriousness of our show, that someone that is running for a serious public office would come and, and even address our viewers and to look for them to be a constituency. So that takes a lot. Like you said, we don't see Dylan Carter patronizing us coming sitting down. They won't sit with the little man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially the little, you know, uh, especially the little man of, of, of a certain ethnicity. And I'm not right. throwing that on them. Right. I'm just saying is you know, He's go a holler at the brothers. Of you know? Goliath. And right. we appreciate that. Let me ask this question. And I want to see your critique on a statement that El Presidente Barack Hussein <laughs> Obama made. Can can I can, do one thing real quick. I'd of like course. to follow up on okay. one comment he mm. made. Okay. okay. Little people. There are no little people. All of us are citizens of the United States of America. You mean and refugees? <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> and the problem is we're not treated like that. Okay. okay? Now, I understand 100% we're not treated like that. But that's the way it needs to be. That's the way it's written. And that's the way we need to return it. All of us are people with our God-given, unalienable rights that no one should interfere or cancel or try and tread upon. Mm. And okay. we need to get it back to that. And that's where we're hurting. And that's why there's protest and unrest in this nation mm. right now, because it's not honored. It's not respected. Well, that's why we respect you. You're an ideologue that has the same idea that we have of equality, although we know it's a pipe dream in American uh, capitalist system that has white privilege. However, <laughs> the president made this statement, and I don't know if you heard this statement on one of his okay. interviews. Okay. In essence, what he said, and I forgot who it was that was interviewing him, he said, you cannot change this system from the inside. Mm -mm. Do you remember that statement? I don't recall that statement. I have to submit you so. Okay. Well, since I said it, and I'm saying he said it. I believe you. Uh, the, you're an honorable <laughs> person. Okay. I, believe you. I trust you on that. What okay. would you think, from your perspective as a political pundit, he meant in that statement? Um, that there's so much cronyism and corruption inside the system that the people really have to back the people that they get in office. So let's say enough of us get behind and elect me into office, unless I have the strength of the people behind me after I'm in office, I won't be able to change the system. Right. It's going to take people, I'm going to be reaching out to people because sometimes they're not going to go along with the changes we need to make. And I'm going to get out, the nice thing is about being governor, I can talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll reach out and I'll mm -hmm. want people to join in. Maybe we'll have some marches because the Congress won't do things right. So we'll have nice, peaceful civil you think marches. Marches work? Yes, they do. If you have enough people, absolutely. When did Europeans march for anything? I think MLK used them very no, effectively. No, no, MLK is Melody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he classifies as European. When have Europeans marched? Um, I, I can't. Well, a long, long time ago, they did in some bad, nasty ways. Therein lies my point. Get him off the hot seat. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely right. There's, there's no going to be. I agree with. Uh, I don't believe that you can change the system from the inside. I don't even think. I think that it. You know, you can't change the system from the inside. I hope. 
if, and this is just my opinion, of course, and this is a hot seat for I know, Doctor, and I'm trying to go along because at the same time, I want to be able to get his campaign in there right. before the things, but it's just, you know, t for the integrity of the viewers of the arena, you know, certain t issues we have to touch on. Um, no, you can't change it for the inside. I'm hoping just for, like I always say, that we're looking for that the African here in America can find a little relief. You know what I'm saying? Within Water relief. Yeah, a lot. I don't think a lot of it's gonna come, but just a little relief. It's you just know, fairness. From, you know, that's just all you, fairness, you actually right. you that's actually it. aren't looking for any relief. relief. Just, you just want fairness want, and freedom. We what, that's we what you want. What, we want what <laughs> that you know what the people who framed the Constitution, who framed it and and, and said life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We want that with the will without willful and intended harm or hindrance from our pursuit of our self determination, of Kujakula self determination, and to be able to determine our destiny. That's what we want. We yes. want unleanable yeah. rights. Yeah. yeah. Not unalienable. Right. Unleanable yeah. so rights. It, in, in our quest for that, then it's, you know, when in our quest for that, and a part of our strategy is to examine and scientifically analyze all options. And if we find a person who says, therefore, you know, human rights and for the rights of humanity to exist unencumbered and unhindered willfully based on race, religion, creed, sexual preference, all of these other things, and they can exist, then we're looking for that. But we're not, at the same time, history has shown us to not be unrealistic in our ambitions. Like, we would love to see you for governor, this and that, but what, at that, what would stop you from, because you still have the big corporate interest. When you get that thing and they put that pressure on yeah, you, pressure. what's going to, do you think that you would be able to stand up to that type of pressures of the of the big companies of the uh, of the you know yeah basically yep yep the yep yep you think you yep yep absolutely I, I will stay pure <laughs> I will I will I really will get it scouts on her. owner <laughs> no not scouts on her. talk to us no 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 but I mean but you have to have it in your if you have to have it in your your spirit that's a genuine reaction though from a lot of people yeah especially when they're hearing a politician speak because I know for me personally prior to past four four to eight years anytime a politician opened their mouth. It was nothing but lies and, yeah. and farce yeah. to me. Well, we you know to what I mean? So that, we didn't invite them on the show. In, in, in particular, <laughs> if they're they're attorneys, they're really good at doing it. Then, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they're experts at doing it. <laughs> Deal and Carter just happen to be attorneys. Just so you know. they, they, both of them. Both of them. <laughs> both of them are attorneys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think? But 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 back to it. You so you think that you would be able to maintain and and, and hold out against that type of onslaught and that type of pressure? Yeah, and my whole education and engineering and science is evaluation of the truth. You only succeed in these disciplines if you search for the true meaning and the true way things happen. And yeah, I have 50 patents. I have a lot of awards around doing this because I always seek the truth and the truth will set you free. So you're an inventor. I'm an inventor. I have 50 patents, actually. Wow. That's I, I impressive. I have a PhD from Georgia Tech, and I actually won an award for the very best PhD across all of Georgia Tech. Not only was he a and, PhD, and, he and, was the best PhD. And, and I want to work for the people. Okay. I want to give that all. That's what we have to do. I mean, that's what people have to do. They have to say, this is what I'm doing. This is public service. Mm. And come in with the attitude of public service. Yes. Now, let me ask this question. America's credit rating. It has dropped three times. However, the interest rates that citizenry pays to banks is going, going up. up right. But what they pay on our passbook accounts is like one or two percent. When we look at America's credit rating Remember dropping, into the mic. Uh, America's credit rating dropping, should that not be tied into us individually that if the country's economic status and rating is dropped, shouldn't our standards be lowered and maybe some of the debt that we have incurred as a result of the same tactics that our government has used, shouldn't that should be a trickle-down effect? But it seems like the government where the banks were bailed out, other entities were bailed out, the poor were getting kicked out. What are your thoughts about America's credit rating and how it affects the citizenry? It's absolutely 
a lot of money being made by the big organizations. And you see the laws, rules, and regulations set so many times to be in favor of those large uh, organizations. Now, I think everyone should just avoid borrowing the money from them. And, but we need to have it where people can have that uh, capability. We need better quality jobs, higher employment and everything. But don't borrow money. They, they're, they're just going to try and take advantage of you. That's all there it is. So my big advice to everyone is unless you absolutely have to, and don't get in this situation where you absolutely have to, right. then don't <laughs> borrow the money. See, don't this, do it. Let me show because you. Because you're, you're, you're giving them your money then. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah. You should never pay that high an interest rate. So don't. Well, let me throw this concept in there as it retains to the police force coming back. And we were talking about body cameras, police cameras. In essence, what you're saying, here's a government that's supposed to be supporting us and serving us, but yet because of their own corruption, you would say don't loan or borrow money because they're corrupt. Can't we use that same analogy, same analogy with the police? They are corrupt no matter and if you put cameras on the cars, cameras on the vest, cameras in their <laughs> forehead, <laughs> a corrupt individual is going to be corrupt. Yeah. 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 Now, there, all of us have to admit, and I think it's good for us, all of us to say, there are some good police, okay? There are, and I'm going to agree with you all, there's some corrupt police too, okay? And what we need to do is really make sure there's no corrupt, corrupt. police. Now, the problem is, the laws, what, what we have is a lot of bad laws and rules. Mm -hmm. Blue code? Uh, it's terrible. So yeah. what Stamps we have to do. disparities. So what we have to do is we have to amend those laws and rules so that the good police don't ever have to enforce a bad we're, law. We're, we're trying to, I, you have to understand the people that you're talking to. It's something that we said, my, uh, Vince said at uh, uh, the, the thing we had yesterday. And he said, you know, behind doors, we make the rap music, F the police, this and that. But when we get pulled over, it's 10 and 2. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's state-sponsored terror. We, the, black men, I mean, you can be clean. No warrants, no everything, and see flip, whoop, flash, and brother sweat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying because it, it is and literally life and death for us. So I don't know, you know, I, I'm, you know, I wish I could say that there was some good. I, I haven't met any good police. Just me personally, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, my, all my yeah, encounters yeah. have been because because the system is so stacked against exa you. exactly, right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things is, you know, that we look at. I think that when you take those oaths, when you come on to be a so-called peace officer, this and that, I think higher accountability. I think tougher sentencing and penalties for police who yeah, have police. proven to be um, um, derelict to duty or things that have went above and beyond. You know, yep. it, it's too many times that they walk and we have to get appeals. And we look, like I said, we're watching tapes of Oscar Grant at Fruitville. Fruitville. You know what I'm saying? Handcuffed behind his back and shot, shot in, the in the back, back of the head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And too many times these Mike Browns and Sean Bills and stuff like that become, Walker. Kenneth, they just become pictures on T-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know, they lose their, their human aspect that they were fathers and mothers and sons and daughters. Right. Things like, and these police too many times get a slap on the wrist. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's no discouragement. If anything. But it's, if exactly. anything, so what is to discourage that type of uh, mentality? And in one of, it's and one culture. Of the, that culture. And one of the problems is, is that we, as us as Africans here in America, we have been, we're being victimized. We have been looked at as we are a voiceless people and people like, and without, that, sanctuary. At, right, without sanctuary. Without and sanctuary. And at the risk of saying, sound of weak, we're actually being picked on. So one of the things that I look bullied. at. Bullied. Bullied. Thank you. That's a better <laughs> word. Bullied. Yeah. And it I is. think that there should be it tougher. Is. It's tougher, a bullying. Yeah, Absolutely. It, should be it really is being bullied. You know? It's wrong. And, and I know there's a lot of things. Like I said, you know, I'm, I'm um, you know, I really take your position in consideration. So there's a lot of things you can't say. You know what I'm saying? You might need the backing of the FOP and a lot of things that's running for governor. But man, really talking to us, there has a lot of us would say that we have yet to see a good police officer. So is there something that we could do? If you were running for governor and could talk to our constituency out there. He is running for governor, by the way. Sorry about that, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> running for governor. If you win, when you win. When, when you win. Yes. When you yes. win it, is there something that can be done about tougher sentencing and, and more accountability and responsibility to these police officers who have proven to be, uh, you know, wrong in their No. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> let, yes. We're gonna get, let you answer that, and then yes. once you finish that, please let the people know about the debates coming up. We got two minutes. Okay. So absolutely, there are things we can do to change this tide of police brutality. Okay. 
and uh, unfair taking advantage of people that are in impoverished situations. Ba basically what it is. It happens not just to um, you know, African American, it happens to Latin Americans mm -hmm. and anyone else that's an impoverished person. Right. They pick on the poor people. Mm -hmm. They really do. And that's just wrong. And we need to have it that there are tougher rules and laws and that there's not such a, uh, a way of the judges, the prosecutors, and everyone else that's in the system mm -hmm. to cover them. Okay, so we need, an independent, we, we need an independent <laughs> entity that they have to report into so that the local law officials and judicials can't cover them, okay? What do you mean independent? Civilian or some other independent? A, a statewide one so you don't have a local system doing it. Okay. So, With some civilians on there. Yes, yeah, so yeah definitely. Yeah, you've got to be civilians. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, so um, there are two debates coming up. In Where? the near future, they're going to be on, one's going to be on Georgia Public Television next Sunday night, oh. okay? So I was one in Perry uh, a week ago, and then in two weeks on WSB Channel 2. What so, time did you say on PBS? I, I think it's 7 p.m. It's like 6.30 or 7. One starts 6, 6.30, the other one's 7. And what day? Uh, on Sunday evenings. Okay. Next Sunday. Yeah. Now, early voting starts tomorrow. What was starts the other tomorrow. one? You didn't say that. You said it was two events? Oh, yeah, you said two. one and six and one. Okay, got gotcha. yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, the yeah. next two Sunday evenings, oh. both of well, them Sunday me, evenings. Let yeah. me say this. We definitely want to thank, in our, in our brief minutes, to definitely thank Dr. Hunt. And listen, definitely. thank you, if sir. he can thank come you. on here and stand the heat of the arena, the hard topic, this may be a man that you want to look at for putting into the governor's space. He came and he was candid with us, straightforward and straight honest. We appreciate that. We really, really thank you for that, addressing our viewers, uh, man, and just being true to your platform. You know, laughing with us, coming on, sharing a good time That's with right. us, thank and, you, and letting us know what you stand for. Hey, like yeah, Christ, do he that. came down okay, into the you. Bowery, right. you know, yeah. Yeah. deal with, look, but you know, the elite, the, they, they said, look at yeah. Price, dealing right. with the uh, Republicans and the exactly. senators. Exactly. Early <laughs> elections start tomorrow. Get out you know, and vote, get, people. Get out and vote, man. You know, Primaries make a change. Vote for the most high. Vote for the most high. There you Primary go. Primary elections are important. There you go. You've been doing that for 400 years. Try something different. Try to vote for somebody else. We've been, no. we've been voting for we've been voting for that dude for 400 years. Let's vote somebody else. Let's hey. give somebody else a chance to run some things. Vote for the sky daddy. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Peace, man. Listen, Thank check you. us out on the arena. All one word. 2013. The arena. All one word. 2013. Again. Vote for. Uh, yeah. Can I endorse? Him? Yeah. Can endorse I? me. I would really be honored. Yo, I like I'd what I'm talking Dr. about. Hunt. If you vote, man, vote for my man, Dr. Hunt. Let's see Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we have to take it back. Because we have right. to take it back. We have to take this government power back. Power to the people. Power to the, the people. The vote is in your hand. The power is in your hand, people. For your sake. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, to <laughs> the people. <laughs> what we look like, son? We good? We have. Yo, right. sit, yeah, oh, definitely, yeah, too. Okay. Sitting yeah. out, definitely sitting out shots to Chi. Oh, Black yeah, son. Sister Chi. Everybody, the them super producers behind the thing. In the Black. land. There she Hood goes. Black, you ain't know. King and queen. Brother working the brother <laughs> wrap it up. But listen, in our two minutes, is anything you want to say? I'll send you a plug. I we were done. I okay. We were done. Well, I, I, it's an honor. It's a real honor to me to have you endorse me. Okay? okay. I really, really am honored. And you also. I and, do. and the one Look. I'm missing is Look. the man that says he won't vote. <laughs> and now the question is. Can we pull in someone that traditionally doesn't vote to try and make a difference? Oh, no, no. You got to tell him Yasha would vote to the most high. That's like trying to get the devil to install an AC. That's nothing even personal. That's nothing even personal. That's nothing 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 personal. I do. And that's so badly. It. You're not going to yeah. change this big system. He has a good heart. But she has, you have a good right. heart, and that's He's the problem. Good, that's that's it, yeah. it. You got a good heart, and that might be that, the problem. And they don't want into nobody in there with a good heart. Right. <laughs> that system is not designed for people it's, with a good it, heart. It's a dog fight. It is. It's a dog fight. It, Look at Barack's hair now. <laughs> when, he, when he went in, when he lost that, had it turn gray. He looked like he lost weight and everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he was just a pack of days. You know what I'm saying? You know, gut shells in, his, in the White House. Yeah. And, and man, then, we, you know what? That's what gets me. Okay, look, the sister who had a mental issue yes, rolled over a barricade. How many times they shot oh, that they sister? Oh, they shot that sister with like the baby in the car. Now, how did school get all the way across the White House?